Welcome back everyone to lecture 47. We're talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. And as we saw previously, note that the fundamental theorem of calculus part two tells us that if we take the definite integral from a to b of a function f of x dx, this will equal f of x evaluated at a and b, where capital F of x is some antiderivative, any antiderivative of the function little f right here. So what we want to do is do some calculations uh, of these definite integrals using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And so what this is going to do is it's going to require that we look for an antiderivative of the various functions. Let's start with this one right here, e to the x. To find an antiderivative, capital F of x, we need to find a function whose derivative is e to the x. Well, since e to the x is its own derivative, it also serves as its own antiderivative. Now, the general antiderivative would be e to the x plus c, but as we've talked about before, when it comes to definite integrals, you don't need the plus c because it just subtracts itself out anyways. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the integral from 1 to 3 of e to the x dx, this is equal to e to the x evaluated at 1 and 3, which this notation means we take e cubed minus e to the first, uh, which really gets e cubed minus e. And as an exact answer, this is what we get. We could approximate if we want to, but exact answers will be sufficient for us. The area under this curve would be e cubed minus e. Uh, for the next example here, uh, let us integrate from 3 to 6 the function dx over x. Now, sometimes, I mean, because this dx right here, this differential is actually this, it's a factor that shows up in this definite integral. The dx is the limit as delta x, uh, what that's like uh, when it comes to this dx it's important to remember that the dx right here is the limit of the delta x as the number of rectangles is approaching infinity right here and so this measures the width the width of our rectangles we don't want to forget about it uh it, it's important in terms of our calculations and again especially as we go more and more into calculus 2 and applications of the integral it's important that we keep track of that dx because it is a it is a physical quantity that's measuring the width of these rectangles and things associated to rectangles again we'll see all of this in the future and so it, because of the length times width formula of rectangles it acts multiplicatively and so oftentimes we, we write dx over x we really mean 1 over x dx like so and so to continue with this calculation, if we want to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, we want to find an antiderivative of our function. And so this we could write as the integral, right, of 1 over x dx. And we've seen in the, in the past that there is a function whose derivative is 1 over x, and it's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus a constant. You want to remember to put absolute values on your natural log. That gives you the most correct antiderivative. But again, we just need to have an antiderivative. It doesn't matter exactly which one it is. So the plus C is okay to remove, and that's what we're going to do. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, um, an antiderivative of 1 over x, we can use the natural log of the absolute value of x as we go from 3 to 6. We're going to plug in 6 and 3, so we get the natural log of 6 minus the natural log of 3. You'll notice that both 6 and 3 are positive numbers, so if you have forgotten the, natural, the absolute value inside of the natural log, you actually would have gotten away with it. I mean, you would have been right for the wrong reason, and you know, I guess I can I can live with that, right? Um, so we get the natural log of six minus the natural log of three. By logarithmic properties, you can combine that together to get you the natural log of six over three. Uh, the difference of a log of logs is equal to a log of a quotient. And that then simplifies to be the natural log of two as the area in the curve. And again, exact answers are okay right here. We don't need to worry about um, decimal approximations, probably anyone in their duck could um, plug that into a calculator. Uh, looking at some other examples right here, let's look at the integral from 1 to 2 of 4t cubed dt. Uh, because we have to do these antiderivatives, we don't usually like to segregate, oh, I did an indefinite integral right here and then a definite integral right here. When it comes to these calculations using the fundamental theorem, we usually just do them in line. So I first kind of think of this as I'm going to do a definite integral and I essentially sort of ignore, kind of ignore these uh, bounds right here. If I was looking for the definite integral, right, we would be doing by the power rule, we get four over four t to the fourth. But since it's not actually a definite, it's not an indefinite integral, we do have to pay attention to these bounds. Uh, we're gonna get this one to two right here. 
Um, simplifying four divided by four, of course, is a one, so that goes away. And so we end up with two to the fourth minus one to the fourth. And this provides us the most difficult part of a lot of these antiderivatives. It's called arithmetic, right? Uh, the scourge of many, many children, right? Learning how to do five digit multiplication. It can be a challenge right here. Feel free to use a calculator, these type of and these type of step, this step right here with the arithmetic. Um, this one's not so bad here. Two to the fourth, of course, is 16. One to the fourth, well, one to anything is going to be one. And four, 16 take away one is 15. So we've, and remember, these calculations, we are calculating um, the area under the curve. So we're looking at the area under the curve, y equals 4t cubed, as we go from one to two. That area is going to be equal to 15. Um, and for this last example here, if we want to integrate from 2 to 5 the polynomial 6x squared minus 3x plus 5, by properties of integrals, we can actually break this up into three different integrals. We can take the integral from 2 to 5 of 6x squared dx minus, uh, the, minus the integral from 2 to 5 of 3x dx and then plus the integral from 2 to 5 of 5 dx. So we can do that. And each and every one of these coefficients, uh, the 6x we can bring out, the 3x we can bring out, and the 5x we can bring out. Uh, and so we can treat these as three separate integrals. But honestly, when people work through these things, that's not exactly how we consider this. What we kind of do is we just do our antiderivative in line, just do these all together. So thinking of the antiderivative, all right, um, antiderivative of 6x squared, we're going to get 6x cubed over 3 by the power rule minus 3x squared over 2 plus 5x. We just kind of handle this all together and then write your limits right there, 2 and 5. Um, simplify your expression if you can. 3 does go into 6 two times. 3 halves, we're just kind of stuck with that one. And so now we're in a situation where we're going to plug in, plug in the 5 into each of these places, plug in the 2 into each of these places. And so this one will show you a little bit more why the arithmetic will often be considered the most tedious part of this exercise right here. So we're gonna first do the case where we have five. So we're gonna get two times five cubed minus three over two times five squared plus five times five, uh, five times five. That's the first expression. And then subtract from that, we're gonna get two times two cubed minus three over two times two squared plus five times two. Uh, try to simplify these things the best we can. Uh, so notice what can we say about this? Uh, well, one thing that one thing that can be helpful when you look at these type of calculations with these indefinite integrals with the with the with the, uh, the arithmetic part of it is you're going to notice that because you're plugging in the same numbers in different locations. Uh, sorry, that is you're going to plug in different numbers in essentially the same location in the polynomial. There are some like coefficients you could use to try to simplify the arithmetic. I mean, you have a two five cubed minus a two two cubed. So you could write that as two times five cubed, which is 125 minus two cubed, which is eight. Uh, then the next part, you're gonna have a negative three halves and there's gonna be a five squared, which is 25 minus a two squared, which is a four. We already did eight there. And then lastly, you're gonna get plus five minus two. And this, if you break up the, the terms in this way, it can make things a little bit easier in terms of this arithmetic, right? Um, so you're going to get, uh, going on right here, uh, you're going to get 125 take away 8. Uh, that is going to be 117. Uh, next, you get 25 take away 4, which is 21. And then lastly, 5 take away 2, which is a 3. Um, and if we perform these uh, these multiplications, 2 times 7, 117 will give us 234, uh, right? Uh, 2 doesn't go into 21 evenly, but we can take 3 times 21 to get 63 over 2, and then 5 times 3 is 15. Um, we can add those together, and then we have to subtract 63 over 2, right? I mean, that, that's really what's left to do. If we add the 15 and the 234 together, we get 249 minus 63 over 2. And so in order to add these together, of course, you're going to get 2 over 2 here. And again, I don't necessarily want to bore anyone with the arithmetic. It's the tedious part, but this is the part we probably know quite well. There's no calculus going on here. In the end, uh, we'll end up with 435 over 2 
as a fraction, or you could write this as a decimal as well. Be patient with yourself uh, when it comes to the arithmetic here. But again, this is the power rule part was pretty straightforward with this because of the antiderivatives we've done before. Be very careful with the arithmetic. Feel free to use a calculator to help you uh, at this stage because again, this is this is. Uh, probably our most tedious part of the whole calculation. We'll do some more examples in the next video. Stay tuned. I'll see you then.